love is in the air this time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. It's a special edition, all about the River City's most romantic meals. Yeah, romance on a plate. Top chefs are revealing their secrets to salads, soups, entrees, and some of the most amazing desserts you'll ever see. Come with us as we go behind the scenes at your favorite local restaurants and learn how they make the same incredible food at home. It's a special romance edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs, and it starts right now. Hi everybody and welcome to this special romance edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett, coming to you from Schultz's Florist, right here on Eastern Parkway, where folks have been coming since 1873 to show their love with flowers. And while flowers are always a nice touch, here at Secrets, we know the way to anyone's heart is through the stomach. So we're going out to eat at some of Louisville's most romantic dinner destinations. And we're going behind the scenes with the chefs to get their best secrets for putting passion on a plate. How about this? Lobster ravioli with saffron butter sauce and a jumbo scallop. We're going to find out how to make that at Veronese with Chef John Veronese. Guaranteed to please. Plus, Iron Chef champion Edward Lee is making soup with shellfish which is actually cooked on pink Himalayan salt and later the sweetest end to a meal you could ever imagine. Chef Josh Moore at Valare shows us the secrets to his handcrafted art that you can eat. But no matter what you order, the romance often depends on the location. And there's nothing more peaceful than dining on the water, especially when you're cruising down the Ohio on the CQ Princess. The Princess is available for private cruises by day or by night. The food on board is spectacular, and so are the views. There was a couple that chartered the boat uh, for the purpose of, of uh, the man proposing uh, to his uh, future bride, so that was, that was an exciting evening. We've taken out as few as two people have chartered the boat, uh, up to 139 guests, so we can handle all size events. And while the captain is happy to show off the boat, Chef Matthew Wilcoxon is showing off the incredible food you can get on board, along with the secrets to making a taste of the princess at home. Up next, a simple, colorful, and very flavorful salad. The dressing that we're going to use on this salad today is a white balsamic and apple. Um, it's got some whole grain mustard in there, there's some Vidalia onion, some white balsamic. It's a really tasty dressing and it's got a little sweetness to it and also some tang from that white balsamic. We have some uh, diced red onion here, just going to add that, that'll add a little bit of uh, spicy notes to our salad. These are ocean spray, craisins, dried, you can buy those in your local grocery store. And then we have some uh, blue cheese crumbles here. You can pick your favorite blue cheese or you can, if you don't, not a fan of blue cheese, you can choose another mild cheese. As one of our final ingredients, we're going to use uh, Granny Smith apple to bring some crunch to the salad. We're going to toast up some almonds to go on this one. We're just toasting them to give them a little bit of color and it brings out the natural oils in them so that you have that nice nutty flavor. All our almonds are nice and toasted. So we're gonna take a handful of those, sprinkle them in. You can really smell the oils coming out of them. It's gonna add a lot of deep, rich flavor to the dish. We're gonna toss all these ingredients together. We're gonna lay down our lettuce first. We're gonna pull out some of our toppings and put them on there. So there you have it. Dinner for two on the CQ Princess could be the secret to getting through any rough waters in your romance. But if you prefer to keep your feet on solid ground, Veronese is a safe bet, typically ranked as one of Louisville's most romantic restaurants. With live jazz and a cascading waterfall, Veronese boasts an atmosphere that's second to none. Add in the creative cuisine of Chef John Veronese, and you'll have a proven recipe for passion, especially when he offers his taste of love menu. I try to use an array of different aphrodisiacs and try to use as many as possible. If you're a fan of oysters, you'll love this oyster bread pudding with a lot of extras. Along with this, uh, this year I'm going to incorporate uh, a few different aphrodisiacs. Uh, arugula, it's used for um, blood flow and gets the cardiovascular going. Uh, caviar, um, again, it's, it's rich, it's elegant. You can do this yourself at home 
when you learn the secrets. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple eggs here and just crack them in the bowl. And I just have a diced up day old bread. You want it a little dry because it's going to help absorb some of that moisture there. And we're going to add chicken stock. And this is kind of where the savory bread pudding changes a little bit. Usually you would add cream and sugar. I have some caramelized leeks in there to add a little bit of depth and flavor. All right, and then we have our oysters. These were freshly shucked from the half shell. I got a nice little bit of the, the liquor in there that's going to help add to the flavor. And then we're going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. My secret is when I push down and the liquid comes in between my fingers, there's enough moisture in there. I have a little tin here that I like to use. Um, it's going to make a nice, pretty individual portion here. From this point, I'm going to stick it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes to get a nice little browning on it. While that's in the oven, Chef John prepares a luxurious sauce to go with it. It's a sour cream base. We're going to add a little bit of horseradish. Again, the spice in the horseradish to zest things up and add a little fire and passion to things. And add a little lemon juice here. Next, Kentucky Proud Paddlefish Caviar. We're going to add that in with the, the mixture. We're just going to stir it up. And it's as simple as that. So here's the bread pudding that we pulled out of the oven. It has a nice little crust on the top. Here, with the nice little individual containers, we're able to turn it upside down and plop it out in the plate. We're going to put a little bit of a creme fraiche on the plate here and on the bread pudding. Garnish it with some more aphrodisiacs and micro arugula to get the blood flow going and some bull's blood, the deep, rich, purple color of the... And then we're going to top it off with a little bit of paddlefish caviar. Nice little color. And if that's not enough, the dish gets a sidecar of sorts. A fresh oyster on the half shell, which is topped with even more caviar. So now we have it cooked, we have it raw, and we have a, a dish here that's ready to deliver. <laughs> that's passion on a plate for sure. And we're just getting started. Coming up next on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, we'll check in with Tim Laird, who's with Louisville's Iron Chef champion, Edward Lee. Wait until you see what he is doing with shellfish and a block of pink Himalayan salt and later dessert. That's also fine art. Chef Josh Moore at Valare shows us the secrets to that. It's still ahead on this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Hi everybody and welcome back to this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett. This time it's all about romance and where to find it. One road may take you here to Schultz's Florist where Debbie and Alice are crafting these arrangements that are absolutely beautiful. Maybe you want to choose something like that or a simple bouquet of roses. No matter what, that's one option. Another, go out to dinner. When you're looking for romance, a perfect destination is Old Louisville at 610 Magnolia. It's home to an Iron Chef champion and one of Louisville's most romantic dining rooms. Tim Laird takes us there. It's a longtime standout on Louisville's restaurant scene dating back to 1978. But these days, it has an updated modern style thanks to its newest owner and head chef, Edward Lee. Now we're ready for the fun part. You might have seen him on TV before as he appeared and won on the Food Network's Iron Chef. It was sweating, <laughs> nervousness, okay. yeah. and then before you knew it, it was done. And it worked out great, so how exciting is that? I can't wait for uh, some of the dishes you're gonna prepare for us today. Yeah. Well, let's go cook. Let's do. Already, this looks fantastic. Tell me what we're gonna do, Chef. It's a, a corn and bacon soup with a trio of seafood. Take some bacon, and um, this is my uh, good friends at Stone Cross. Uh, makes this local bacon, and uh, I'm just gonna give it a couple of slices. I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of butter. I'm gonna put this on some heat. I'm cutting up the corn here. All right, so I've got some corn, two ears of corn, roughly. Such an easy soup to make, but the flavors are gonna be real complex. I'm gonna add this lovely right. yellow corn. And our sweet corn going in, that good, sweet and salty. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of milk. I'm gonna add about two cloves of fresh garlic. Make sure it's fresh garlic. And then I've got some uh, interesting thing here. This is called quark cheese. Quark cheese. Yeah, and it's a German style uh, sour cream, if you will. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of that. Let that kind of calmly simmer for about 20 minutes. After that, the last ingredient goes in. Now I'm gonna add just about one and a half cups of vegetable stock. After some more simmering, the chef transfers the soup into a blender to give it a perfectly smooth texture. And we're gonna get it, give it a nice high-powered whir. Voila. Next thing I've got is my seafood trio. I have three uh, uh, interesting seafoods here. I've got uni, which is also known as sea urchin roe. Um, sometimes if you go to your favorite Japanese restaurant, they'll have it there. Um, I've got some lobster tails that I've already poached, but very, very lightly. And then um, this is interesting. Sometimes in the peak season, we are lucky enough to get uh, whole scallops in the wow. shell. Look at the size of this. So you see how it's dripping? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah so there's still water in there and still alive. So this is still alive. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come in here and you're just gonna, just like any bivalve, like an oyster or a clam, you're gonna cut through the bottom and release that muscle. Oh wow, Okay. there it is. And let it free. Get that free, and wow. Mm -hmm. And this smells so fresh. I mean, it's I mean, of the sea, smell. it's just, yeah. it smells like the sea. There's no uh, other taste, just oh. You have your beautiful, Live scale. And there it is. See, and this is what I'm used to seeing, Chef. I no. mean, this is fresh. So I've got half a lobster tail, I've got one scallop, and I've got my uni. So I'm just going to add a couple of drops of lemon juice. And um, this is a beautiful uh, uh, first press olive oil from California. Just a little bit of that. Nothing a little, crazy. A little bit, because there's a lot of flavor in that first mm -hmm. pressing. The way I'm going to cook this is going to be a little bit interesting. This is my new favorite toy in the kitchen. This is actually a uh, Himalayan salt stove. I bake this in the oven. It's about a half an hour at 450 degrees, so this is screaming hot. And what we do with this is we cook uh, seafood on this very lightly. And what it does is, actually, if you notice, I didn't add any salt to my seafood. Right. Because we're gonna pick up the salt from the stone. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this on here and I'm gonna wait for you to I'm gonna have you just kinda watch them for me, okay? Okay. This is a big responsibility with, with Chef Lee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're just giving it just a little warm sear on the outside. Got you're, it. You're doing very well. Are we well. doing all right? Yeah, <laughs> well, from there, it's right into a special bowl that will actually keep the fish warm as it comes to your table. A little bit of fennel. That I'm going to throw on top of here. So we're going to add the corn soup to the bottom. I've got a little bit of pistachio oil. I'm going to drizzle just a few drops on top. And get this, curry toasted pumpkin seeds. Just like two or three little leaves of tarragon. The way this bowl works is we have our hot soup on the bottom. We take, we close the lid with this and we have our, our seafood on top. And what that does is it actually keeps that seafood just slightly warm. Oh, what a great idea. And so this is uh, sort of our little surprise bowl. When we serve it at the restaurant, uh, the server will actually open up the soup. Okay, there you and go. So that and do the reveal. Yeah. Part of what we actually uh, encourage you to do is take a little bit of the seafood, dunk it in the warm corn soup, uh -huh. and then- And then taste. And then taste All right, it. undunk so, it. Here we go, here it comes. Oh, that is flavor. Chef, that is incredible. Thank you. Mmm. That's awesome. This is incredible. You can taste how fresh the scallops are. They are delicious. This is very good. good. I've never had anything like that. It's, it's uh, very fresh. I've never tasted anything like this combination. Beautiful. Thank you. That is incredible. Chef, thank you. Thank you. Chef Ed Lee is amazing. And there's one thing to point out, at 610 Magnolia, a dinner reservation gets you a table for an entire night. So you definitely want to plan ahead and call early. And we have more ahead on Secrets of Louisville Chefs coming up. We'll go back into the kitchen with Chef John Veronese, who's revealing the secrets to his lobster ravioli. This dish I have loaded with aphrodisiacs. Plus, dessert at Valare, where Chef Josh Moore is serving edible art. Don't you go away. We'll be right back with more romantic secrets of Louisville chefs. 
Welcome back to Secrets of Louisville Chefs, where romance is in the air. You can see I'm surrounded by beautiful flowers here at Schultz's Florist in the Schnitzelberg neighborhood, where roses are always in style. And when it comes to romantic meals, Louisville's top chefs are ready to deliver, too. On Frankfurt Avenue, Chef John Veronese is cooking up something called his Taste of Love menu. It's full of aphrodisiacs that are guaranteed to make your sweetheart melt. Guaranteed to please. The question is, what is it that makes an aphrodisiac work? I think it comes back from the older days when certain foods have more vitamins and minerals that they're missing out of their normal diet every day. And when they have an opportunity to consume these items, that it makes them feel better, more vigorous and vibrant. Whether you believe in them or not, it's tough not to get excited about this. Right now we're gonna make some lobster raviolis with some jumbo seared scallops. We're gonna finish it with a little saffron lobster butter. We have loads of aphrodisiacs loaded in this dish too. I have my filling here, we're gonna add some cream cheese, some blended mozzarella and parmesan, and then we have some nice chunks of lobster. Some fresh basil goes in too, to add a little pop. And diced chives. Just needs a tad bit of salt and pepper. And we just want to blend this together. Now for the pasta. It's a job made easy with the right tool. Have my ravioli pressed here and some fresh pasta dough that's lightly floured. He puts a dollop of the delicious lobster filling on each square. Then I'm just going to fold the pasta dough over here. And then the other part of the mold we're going to set on top that's going to help form the ravioli. And then what we're going to do is just take a rolling pin. And that's going to help perforate the edges, cut the ravioli a little bit. It's going to push the mixture into its pockets. We're just going to pop it out of the mold here and just release it. And then we just need to trim up the edges of the pasta. And we're going to simmer it for about five or six minutes. The plating begins with the lobster ravioli. And bring it over to the plate here. Some of the broccoli rabe. And oyster mushrooms here that are sautéed in a little bit of garlic and olive oil. Then we got our nice jumbo diver scallop. All right, this is where we bring in the lobster and saffron butter. I've reduced a little bit of cream with the saffron and then we've whisked in uh, some butter and uh, lobster stock. And it brings the dish together, it adds a nice velvet tea and creaminess to the dish. And then the garnish for this dish is some fried potato ribbons. The fried potatoes get luxurious when the chef adds truffle oil on top, which is also an aphrodisiac, said to replicate the scent of male pheromones. Great stuff at Veronese, but it wouldn't be a romantic meal without dessert. So when you want to do it right, you pick up the phone and call Louisville chef Josh Moore. He is a master of many dishes, but his unforgettable finales are the most impressive. Tim Laird takes us to Valari. No trip to Valari is complete without a taste of Chef Josh Moore's authentic Italian cuisine. Love the food. Chef's phenomenal. But perhaps nothing sets Valari apart from the crowd more than their desserts, garnished with Chef Josh Moore's edible art. This is an apple we made earlier today. Fill that with pound cake and berries. Take that out with a can on a nice vanilla custard sauce. It's just a really nice end to your meal and it's very memorable. I love the color of that too. It's just a beautiful color. Oh my gosh. Apples, roses, even harps made completely from sugar. I mean, what you create is just phenomenal stuff. And there's only a few chefs actually in the country that work with sugar. To my knowledge, there's no one in the city that's doing any sugar art, especially in a production. You know, this is a daily thing for us. It goes out on every tiramisu, every special occasion, birthday, um, you know, anniversaries, those type things. First, the chefs heat the sugar to 310 degrees until it's liquefied. 
After that, they pour it out to cool and then hold it under heat lamps. We've colored it with um, just a basic gum paste food coloring like you use for cake decorating. Sure. I'm pulling this, it's incorporating air and it's cooling the sugar, which is giving you that shine. And you can see it really starting to come out. And if you're wondering, yes, this is hot. I was gonna say that's hot. <laughs> the chefs have to work quickly while the sugar is hot and teamwork is the key. We've worked out quite a system. Here comes the strings we talked about of the harp. Talk about detail, talk about intricate. The chef uses a blowtorch and a sharp knife to attach the strings. And if you look closely, you'll see that they get thinner and thinner, just like on a real harp. It's amazing, the steady hands. Once the harp is strung, Josh adds a few flowers, again, using the knife and torch. I'm gonna do our finishing touches on here. I'm gonna put a little butterfly. Nice garnish for a dessert. Right on that plate. Incredible stuff. Got to come down to Valari, uh, see these guys. Where I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. Chef Josh never ceases to amaze me. He's always coming up with new sugar art creations. So if you're looking to really do something special, pay him a visit down at Valari. But don't forget, call ahead. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us on this edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Thanks to the city's top chefs for revealing their secrets and to the folks here at Schultz's Florist for hosting us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, if you're looking for the recipes or a complete restaurant guide, it's easy to find. Just check it out on our website at newlocaltv.com. For all of us at BMB Productions, I'm Kevin Harned, and we'll see you next time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs.